Joining me right now is Florida Senator. He is a member of the Intelligence Committee, the Vice Chair uh, of the Intel Committee, Appropriations Committee member, and Foreign Relations Committee member as well. Senator Marco Rubio is joining me now. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much morning, for being here. Thanks for having me. So what can you tell us about the president coming to the Capitol uh, today to try to convince people that he's got some agreement here? Does he have an agreement on a reconciliation plan, to your knowledge? Well, I don't know if he has an agreement. I can tell you that a pretty, I, they say we don't know the details, and that's probably on the fine print side. But I know this, no matter what, he's coming up here to sell a plan that's going to raise taxes, that's going to increase debt spending, and it's going to give the government more power, the central government, the federal government, more power over new aspects of our lives. That I'm confident that the bill is going to have in it. And um, I don't call it the reconciliation package. I mean, look, this is a build back socialist plan, and it doesn't matter if it's three and a half trillion or 1.75 trillion. At the end of the day, that's a gimmick because they can just lower the number of years. They can say, well, we're only going to be, we're only going to have these socialist programs for two years, and, and that'll lower the cost because they, their plan is once they get these things in place, it's very hard to repeal them, and they know that. That's what they're banking on. So, so that's what he's coming up here to pitch and sell. And it's like everything else he does. It's always built around these fake artificial timelines that are for political purposes. We had to get out of Afghanistan by September 11th so he could have a press conference bragging about it. We saw that disaster. And now he has to come up with this plan to borrow and spend at least close to $2 trillion at a minimum, expand our government, introduce, codify socialism into the law. But he has to do it before he gets on a plane and flies to Europe where the Chinese will hypocritically you know, talk about climate change while they're out there funding coal-fired plants all over the world and are the world's leading polluter. So, um, par for the well, course. That's right. Well, that's right. They are the world's leading polluter. I'm glad you said that because well, I don't know why anybody's expecting the Chinese to keep their promises, the CCP, on, on, on a climate deal. But you just said something real important in terms of what we're going to hear from this president in a few minutes. I know that he's trying to get the infrastructure deal passed, but the progressives won't sign on to that unless they have their way on, on the uh, climate package. Do you expect that an infrastructure package could pass this week? or were you, are you expecting that we will see uh, an extension of the highway funding? Because that highway funding expires on the 31st, right? Right. And I don't know if, if they're going to pass one or not. I can tell you that the reason why I voted against the infrastructure bill is what's happening this week, and that is it's being held hostage. It's being held hostage because what they're saying is until you agree to our socialist plan, we're not going to go ahead and pass, pass this bipartisan thing that, that came out of the Senate. They're holding it hostage. It's what they're using now to force people, perhaps some people that aren't comfortable with the Build Back Socialist plan, to vote for it or to say they're for it so they can get an infrastructure bill passed. It's, it's what they said they were going to do all along. It's the reason why I voted against it. I wasn't going to be part of this blackmail effort. Yeah, and by the way, that took real courage. Thank you for that leadership in voting against the infrastructure plan. I questioned it from the get-go because it's only 11 percent infrastructure. I mean, for God's sakes, even the money that's going to Am uh, going to uh, the Amtrak uh, is not for the tracks, but it's it's actually for the pension fund at Amtrak. So it's all gimmicks, and and I don't know why you would vote for something that doesn't have a dime for border wall construction, doesn't have a dime uh, for the infrastructure that we really need, but. I'm I want to talk about the infrastructure around Amazon. Uh, Amazon is under fire following a report in the New York Times, the report accusing Amazon of shortchanging new parents, patients dealing with medical crises uh, and other vulnerable workers on leave, Senator. You're calling on the president and the Department of Labor to investigate Amazon. What do you want to say? Well, I think this is just another example of woke hypocrisy, right? So you have these companies out there that spend all day virtue signaling and lecturing us and putting up their little banners and censoring speech and doing all these sorts of things. But when you look at their bottom line and the decisions they make, these guys have no problem sending an American job to another country, and they have no problem, you know, screwing around with their workers. So they, they, they love to tell us how to spend taxpayer money and lecture us about social justice and equity and whatever other woke label they can come up with, but they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites. These are companies that are willing to do business and partner with a genocidal government in China, a government that's actually putting Uyghur Muslims in work camps, using slave labor. They're, they're up here lobbying now to kill our Uyghur our slave labor bill that's stuck in the house. The, 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 these companies, the, the, the hypocrisy is extraordinary, and they get away with it. They get away with it because most of the media won't cover it for what it is.
Well, we cover it. As you know, China has been yeah. one of my most important priorities, and I want to know why your bill is stuck in the House. Who is getting paid by the CCP there on Capitol Hill? I mean, look at General Mark Milley calling China's hypersonic weapons test very close to a Sputnik moment, Senator. This from the guy who called his counterpart in China and told him we're going to give you a heads up on whatever we do uh, with regard to China. Yeah, I'm sure his counterpart in China gave him a heads up about the hypersonic missile being launched. But um, here's what I would add to all that, and that is, I don't know if someone's getting paid. I can tell you what this is true. The Chinese Communist Party has uh, developed an expertise. They have refined and, and, and really mastered the art of deputizing American corporate class to come to Washington, D.C. and be their lobbyist. And what they tell them is, hey, look, you have two, three, five percent of the market share in, in China's one and a half billion people. You want to keep it? Then go to Washington. Washington and get your member of Congress to block it or your key member of Congress to block it. So this place is full of people that love to talk tough on China, but when the rubber meets the road, they're not there. And the reason why they're not there is because someone gets to them and says, hey, this is bad for business. This is not a good thing. We know the companies that have either openly or secretly been out there lobbying. You know, Nike's tried to kill this, uh, this and others as well. We've had some chambers of commerce do it. All of them because they're making money in China and they don't want, they don't care if it is being produced, the products that they're sourcing are being produced by slaves. They don't care because it helps their bottom line and their quarterly earnings and everything else. And, and, and they've got American politicians doing their bidding under the guise of either secretly or under the guise of economic growth. Well, how disgusting is that? I mean, you have been pushing rules around investing and not investing in Chinese companies now for years. You were among the first voices out there to point out the fact that the CCP wants to replace the United States as the number one superpower. And these companies, these Chinese companies that Larry Fink at BlackRock is telling all their investors to invest in, they're enabling the CCP to take us over. And here we are having them listed on U.S. exchanges and they don't even follow our rules. I mean, right. Senator, how is it possible that this corruption is in plain sight? Is it just a conflict of interest because the Biden family gets money from China? And then there's this op-ed in the journal this morning, Professor Biden and his ambassadors highlighting Joe Biden's employment as the Benjamin Franklin presidential practice professor at the University of Pennsylvania. The op-ed notes that Biden was paid more than a professor for what he has been called a very vague job. He got $317,000 dollars from the University of Pennsylvania and now he wants to make the president of the university his ambassador to Germany and the chairman of the university his ambassador to Canada what is this about a quid pro quo yeah, usually those, those posts are reserved for donors, and they've given a little bit of money. Some of these people have, some of them have given none. But I think the question is, because this is now a pattern, right? If this was an isolated incident, it would be one thing. But I think you look at it and say, all right, you got this job. They paid you a good chunk of cash to do it, and now the person who got you the job is suddenly going to be an ambassador uh, to, to, to Germany and, and, and these other posts that they're now thinking about. So, look, it calls into question when you put it in line with all these other things that have gone on with, with the president's son and, and with others. I think it's important to remember the corporate party in America is the Democratic Party. I mean, look at the donations. All people got to do is go online and look at the donations. Look where the money went. Uh, Wall Street gave more money to the Democratic Party. The wealthiest zip codes in America voted for the Democratic Party because at the end of the day, they have another thing they've mastered is the art of saying one thing and doing another. They protect the American corporate class and big business because big business pays homage. It does what it needs to do on the woke side, and, and there's big money involved. Look, in, in, in this uh, rotating cycle and revolving door of people leaving government, getting cushy jobs outside, coming back in again, all through corporate America. Yep. It's incestuous, and they figured out how to play it, and they play it very well, and it didn't get any coverage either, except in networks and stations like yours. Yeah, well, they really let down the American people, I'll tell you that much. And what a letdown from these woke CEOs and a letdown from the media, for sure. Wow. Senator, real quick before you go, when I promoted you were coming on, I posted a shot of you back in the day playing football. You still playing football? No, I, well, no, I like to watch it more than play it these <laughs> days. Uh, uh, at this point, my, my, my sons uh, uh, my, uh, have gone, they've gotten stronger, faster than I have, so I can't play with them anymore. And <laughs> I don't want to rupture my Achilles uh, and wind up in a, in a wheelchair for, in, in crutches for a month and a half. Oh, so it's a, it's a lot more yes. fun to watch these days. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Senator, good to see you this morning. Thanks for all Thank your you. leadership. Senator all Marco right. Rubio joining us this morning in D.C. We'll see you soon, Senator. Thanks.